Yes, yes, welcome back. Yo, yo. I started with a hip hip hop theme there, Gav. Yes. yes. What do you reckon? Mate, I did a post on that the other day. Just squats, just when you're struggling, put on some gangster rap. <laughs> on and squat. That's all you gotta do. That's what, mate. I tell you, just get in there and get it done. I don't know why people don't wouldn't do that. I mean, it's yeah, just yeah. if he's gonna match songs to to exercise, squats is is hip hop. It is. Deadlifts maybe too, but yeah, lower body stuff, you just gotta get in there. <laughs> get it well. Right. Is is the big question then? Massive question. You ready? You don't. You not, we're not prepped for this. You ready? Peanut butter, smooth or not? Ooh, smooth. Go on. You smooth boy. Yeah. Fair that's enough. What she said. That's what she said. That's all. That's the end of the podcast. <laughs> Done. That's the podcast for the day. <laughs> well, the, the problem is the whole thing. The whole the whole reason we started this was to be more direct and get on with it. And I was you go on some and you know nothing wrong with it. Some podcasts are longer and they're, they're doing like playing games and stuff like that and asking rapid fire questions so i thought i just ask you if you like peanut butter smooth or or crunchy then we can crack on <laughs> well, i've been trying um have you seen, do you follow the rock i do yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh mate I, got, I gotta try his pancakes when he when i see that peanut butter drizzling over those pancakes i'm like oh my god i'll ask next time i'm with him i'll ask him he, i'm regular i miss i miss stunt double hey you dm yeah. me the other day he said you you putting that peanut butter on your pancakes i was like i, I need to get a smooth the drizzly mm. one yeah, he said. He said to me, "I'm going to do Jumanji three. Do you want to be in us?" Yeah, you know, worries. Yeah, he said, "You, you'll be the little stumpy one before I go in the video game." <laughs> right. Let's talking about your peanut butter and your and your pancakes. Then that's where we're going today. We're going to talk about food right. because I think. Um, well, I don't think I know. That's where probably people's biggest problem is the arch enemy the nemesis go to the gym do what you like calling it three takeaways on the way home yeah problem created so we talk about healthy foods it might be snacks it might be things that people lack and let's start with the lowest common denominator don't want to refer to them people as that but the pe- the thing that people need to do is an absolute starting point the basic and then we'll ramp it up to the people that want to take it more seriously so let's start there so if i'm a I'm, a, I'm going to give you the hypothesis. Are you ready for this? Go ahead. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to join a gym. I'm going to lose weight and toad up. International. And then, <laughs> everyone knows it. I'm going to lose weight and tone up. And I, But I don't want you to write me a diet. I don't want you to tell me what I can and can't eat. <laughs> I just, I'm getting, I feel a bit sick even going through this. I was so bored of this conversation. In 21 years, people have been telling me this. <laughs> so that's the scenario. So, okay, no problem. Let's start you with cleaning things up a little bit. Let's tidy things up. Apart from the basics that we can find on the back of an NHS flyer, what are the things that you find in your experience do people struggle with the most or come into terms with or where should they start? Go. They struggle to come to terms with in terms of what what they've got to eat or how much they've got to eat or what, it's, what well, it's both of that. It's the fact that they don't realise that they're going to have to eat healthy if they want to get something out of it, isn't it? So okay, so that's okay. We've got to convince them that the that, that choice I, is going to work. Yeah, the thing that I found the most with every, like anybody you do a consult with or you speak to about health uh, nutrition, everybody knows they got to eat vegetables and fruits. Everybody, yeah. everybody, pretty much knows what a healthy diet looks like, right? It's just looking at sometimes people struggle with, or they, I find that they get um, sort of besotted with the, the, the minicule stuff that they don't need to worry about. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's like, which supplement is going to be the best? What time should I eat certain things? When that's, that's stuff they, they need to focus on later on, further down the line, if, if they aren't, um, once they've nailed the basics down. Mm-hmm. So let's, if we look at the, the general overview of somebody's going into a gym and they want to start to see improvements in their body composition, if they want to start to see improvements in their performance or fitness levels, in my opinion, like they need to start looking at their plate first and making sure there's some protein and vegetables on there. That's yeah. the first thing. Yeah. So as many meals as you could, let's say, for example, they had three meals a day, in those three main meals, is there some put protein on that plate and is there some veg- some form of vegetables on there? Yeah. Don't worry about the amounts just yet. You can come to that further down the line if, if this is like the basics. Just make sure there's some form of protein and vegetables on there. Mm-hmm. Now, do you understand what protein is and what 
a vegetable looks like. That's the, that's the <laughs> next step. Yeah. So they, that's what it should be on a plate, for example. And then, cause you've got, and then they'll go down this and this is the problem with like social media and all magazines and all this type of stuff is this diet is the best or that diet is the best. You should be carnivore. You should be vegan. You should be vegetarian. You should be this, you should be that. Out of every diet that I've personally looked at or tried, and I've, I've done the paleo stuff, I try keto, I've done all, I've done all the crazy stuff. If you follow a vegetarian-based diet and you put meat on your plate, you're going to do well. <laughs> I love this art comment. Vegetarian <laughs> with me. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly what it is. If, yeah, if you, no, if it's you so garnish great. your plate with meat or fish, some eggs or dairy, whatever it is, and you've got a good chunk of vegetables on there, mm-hmm. you're going to do extremely well. Yeah. Now, yeah. one of the best people I've heard speak, and people like go down the DNA route, and we there's a lot we don't know about DNA and genetics and all mm-hmm. that type of stuff. But when you look at the biochemistry of how the body functions and the physiology of everything, one of the best people I've heard speak on it is um, the Danish guy called Umaro Kadogan. He's on Instagram. The guy is an absolute genius. Like, mm-hmm. he's unreal. And we were going, so I was on a course with Omaro and we were talking about sort of obviously genetics and biochemistry and all that stuff. But he was like pulling up studies and studies and studies. I think it was in, it was in Scandinavia. I I can't remember it was Denmark, Sweden or Norway. I can't remember the country, but they were pulling up studies on for every 100 grams below, I think it was 650 grams of vegetables and berries every 100 grams below that amount that you eat you'll increase your risk of cardiovascular disease by 10 percent yeah right so let's put that into the equation now make sure there's fruits and vegetables on your plate no problem right (laughs) so when we look at how the everything that the body is let's say everything body there's a lot of amino acids that go into the body and that's the body needs to function so enzyme production uh, hormones, uh, immune system. We're not even talking about muscle mass yet. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And people think, oh, yeah. I have problems with muscle mass. And there's all this other stuff that it does as well. Well, let's make sure there's enough amino acids coming in as well. So that's why I would look at it and go, right, make sure there's some protein on your plate and make sure there's a, a good amount of fruits and berries. Uh, sorry, yeah. uh, vegetables and berries and fruits on your plate as well. Yeah. So I would just start there. I definitely agree with you on that one. I think the the understanding is obviously key the, you know the people's education and not not knowing enough about the importance of it and you know once you once you start putting a number on it and saying five a day you know then people just have five and that's it you know and then they start counting things like a cookie because it's got raisins in it and saying what oh, it's healthy then and it's it shouldn't be like that so they're, they're the, definitely the key things uh, to start with and going back to some of those comments there, I mean, I totally agree with you about the vegetarian thing. You know, that's what we need to do. And if it can be more vegetarian and plant-based and all that thing, that they're the kind of things I agree with. And I don't mind that, you know, obviously I have the meat and the fish because that's where I'm getting it from. But, yeah. you know, there are some, there's different types of people out there. There are people that eat a type of diet and it's going to be vegetarians and vegans because of ethical reasons. You know, they don't, they don't like the way animals are treated. And, I can get that. I can kind of, un- I can kind of empathize with that because if it's something I don't like, I, I don't do it as well. I'm fine with that. It's when people do it for no other reason and they don't even know why they're doing it. They just heard that it's okay to try changes. it. Yeah. Or, or they watch that. I mean, and the thing, the thing with that is like, you can cherry pick studies all you want to put in something. But you can. When, when the arguments against those studies that they're pulling up are so easy, mm. you've got to be thinking, hang on, like yeah. what's going on here? Do you yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. in that case, like, yeah, but if, if it, but if it's ethical and so, like, I've, I coach vegetarians, mm. I've got vegetarians in my groups. Yeah. So if like, and they're, they're the main thing for them is like ethical or they just don't like the texture or the taste. Yes. Yeah. If that's the case, that's no problem. Yeah. We're going to put things in place so we can supplement what's missing. Yeah. So exactly. if there's the first thing I ask, if they're vegetarian, can they eat eggs? Can they eat dairy? Can they is it is tofu okay? Things like that, and then we mm. start to f- fine tune what we need to fine tune. Yeah, and put things in place for them so that they can get um, amino acids, and then we can start to see what's missing out of the diet, and we can supplement from there. Perfect. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think that's where most people would want to be anyway, and, and the enjoyment of it's key, isn't it? I think um, you don't fully 
you know, until you start rotating your foods, finding different alternatives, trying new methods of cooking and, and learning to enjoy cooking, I don't think you're ever going to get the benefit and the feeling of satisfaction from a plate of vegetables. You know, the amount of times we've been, you know, cooking and banging, well, mate, you know. You look at the, the main issue people have with the vegetable thing, it's just they boil it and just whack it on a plate. That's yes. That's the problem. Yeah. Right. So yeah. now let's let's go back to when we were traveling around Asia. We had some of the best food ever. Unbelievable. Like, yeah. The food is unbelievable. Yeah. We used to sit in that restaurant in Hong Kong or Thai, like that uh, little place in Taiwan, in Taipei, we used to go to. The vegetables were unbelievable. Yeah. So the thing that I've laid up in my groups, and in, especially when uh, we're talking about nutrition, is I've laid up recipe manuals where each recipe is around 500 or so calories. So it's very simple to start working in 500 calorie chunks, mm-hmm. right? Each recipe has around 30 to 40 grams of protein in a serving. So if somebody's putting that into my fitness pal, all they've got to do is create the recipe that I've done and then click add to diary and it automatically adds that. And then all mm-hmm. they've got to do is just add a bit more protein if they need more. For example, mm-hmm. just search chicken breast, whatever it is, add it in. So it's very, very quick to do. But if the, the thing that I really wanted to focus on was having sides of vegetables and, and so on, like... You, you go back to that 650 grams of vegetables and berries that I just mentioned just now. You say that amount to somebody, you go, oh my God, I can't eat that. When, if you look at, now this is myself, and once I start to coach people and start to show them the, the vegetable dishes that they can make at home, which are very, very simple. One we made the other night in the house, um, this was done, like the long, it only took this long because we just put it in the oven. But to prep it and make it, like to really prep it out, took five minutes. Mm-hmm. We had salmon fillets, and this can be done with chicken thighs, chicken breast if you want to as well, white fish, whatever you want, but it was salmon fillets. And we put over soy sauce, little, little drizzle of sesame oil, grated ginger, grated garlic, and lime juice. And we just let it marinate. Oh, be joking. That, we have that every week. Mate, it's unbelievable. I never knew. When you started talking, I thought, if he says ginger now, that Mate, is exactly cool. what we do. Yeah, well, obviously, we lived in China, so we've... Yeah. That, we love that kind of food right. anyway. But So whack that in the oven. Literally, the, the salmon, obviously, if it's from frozen, take a little bit longer. Yeah. But literally 15, 20 minutes, the salmon's done. Whilst that's being done, we're boiling the, like, uh, steaming the broccoli off on the side so this yeah. gets just nice and soft. And then the juices from that, we just pour over the veggies. And the veg, yeah. Hey, the next day, I had 500 grams of broccoli in yeah. one meal. Like, I couldn't stop eating it. Yeah. It's it was, so tasty. The flavor it's... was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not so much like the, the main thing I find is like people just go boil chicken, boil broccoli, or it's very, very bland. There's no yeah. flavor to it and it's hard to stick to. Yeah. Right. There's a lot to, there's a lot to say for that, the taste of it. I think it's a good example of that is because that is so, such a tasty, tasty meal. I do it all the time. Um, absolutely love it. And you, then if, if just for the purpose of this conversation, let's scoot on to the next stage of people. If we do it in three stages, so we've got like almost the, the starters, the complete, you know, novices, people that want to get going, then you've got the people that are taking it more seriously. You know, the ones that do go to the gym regularly, but they still need to refine the diet. Then third of all, we'll go to the more serious people. If we get some people in the middle, the next stage I find the problem would be is they then start, uh, these type of people start looking at other people on Instagram or other influencers and they go, right, it's about meal prep now. And then they get the, they get the Tupperware out of containers. And then they do this thing where they just go one, two, three, four, five, eight meals, all the same. Yeah. And then, they, and then in a week they've had enough. They thought, yeah. I can't, can't carry on this. Yeah. Then, then they also do the other thing, which is fundamentally you can't work. I mean, prepping your meals is good. It shows good organization. If you haven't got time, it's much better than buying out. We know all of that. It's obvious, but if you can make your meals, make your meals. If you can cook, cook. The other thing is they do is they, they buy things like mints. Mince is a good go-to, a little bit like eggs, easy to cook, but also easy to chew, not chew properly and swallow, which yeah. is a massive part of the digestive process. They're almost missing yeah. out because it's almost, it's broken down already. Yeah. So even though you're banging a load of mince down your throat because it's cheap and it's easy to cook and it's easy to prep and you can eat it cold, you're also not doing your digestive system any favors either because yeah, that whole couple, chewing process is gone. There's a couple of... Um good and they, like you you just pulled up the con of the mince but there's a pro to it as well so for yeah. example if somebody let's say for example somebody's been on a processed highly processed food diet and they've been eating those types of foods mm. then 
essentially that's less than having mints, right? Do you mm. know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. The body is really smart. Yeah. So if you're going to provide the foods that you don't have to digest effectively, the body isn't going to go to the expense to produce the enzyme to digest it. Mm. When somebody can, and this, this is one thing, like let's say, let's go back to the, the person who needs to start really, really simply. Yeah. I might say, start with mints. Yeah, because yeah. They, depending on what they've done before. Yeah. So if they've done a lot of processed foods and the body's gone, I don't need to produce any enzymes. It's going to be way too cost effective for me to do that. Mm. I don't need to produce them because they're eating this, this, and this. That's this is very simple terms in thinking. The body doesn't work this way, obviously. But what you'll find is people will go, um, I'm gonna have steak and nuts for breakfast, or steak and vegetables for breakfast. Yeah. That steak is a lot like it's hard to break that down if you haven't got the enzyme to do it, yeah. you digestive enzymes to do that. Mm. So it might be that I go actually use mints mm. or actually dairy might be a bit better. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So because, yeah. or, uh, or a whey protein powder might be better because mm. it's easier for you to digest at the minute. And yeah. then we slowly we build, build that up. up to it. Yeah. So with uh, like that middle portion, it might be okay. And now we're going from mints into other things. Mm-hmm. And it, it's like, and it's finding which is the best solution for that person as well. So it might be that they go, actually, I enjoy, like, it's easier for me to make eight meals on a Sunday. So I got them all for the week. Yeah. But I enjoy eating the same thing. Okay, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But what you've got is from other people, if they eat eight meals the same through the week, they get taste fatigue. It's yeah. like boring and they can't stick to that. Yeah. So there's like, there's always pros and cons. And that's where the coaching comes in. And there's no one, one I w- ideal way to do it. That's mm-hmm. from my experience from coaching people. But for the vast, like 70 to 80% of people that's like yourself and myself, um, clients that I coach, what they do in the evening, I just get them to do for the next day. Yeah. Leftovers. Keep it simple. Overcook. Just, yeah. just cook more. Then you got two meals the same. You enjoy it because you cooked it the, the night before and you oh, yeah, okay, eat it the next day. And the next night you do something else. Mm. Yeah. So, but whatever is easiest and what you enjoy, that you can you're basically going to sustain that then much mm. easier if you're using food that you enjoy. Yeah, definitely. You know? Some of those meals as well, we'll say with the mints, that, uh, that's a little speciality. If you made like a a bolognese type dish with your tomatoes and your vegetables in them. I always yeah. find a little cooking tip for you. When it sits for a while anyway, the next day it actually tastes better. Yeah. The flavors sit in and it's it's uh yeah. it does taste better. So this you're right, there's pros and cons to everything, but it's all in context of where you are and where you want to go. So I, do, yeah. I definitely think when that middle ground then it's about that regularity. What's your what's your opinion and take on these people that are, are starting the gym or they're going to the gym they're exercising regularly and then they go, well, I'll eat less. It's going to drop um, the calories. So you do need to stay in a calorie deficit. Hmm. It depends where they're coming from, how, how quick they need to do something. Hmm. I find that there's only so long you can go more exercise, less food. So the further that goes apart, the worse you're going to be. Yeah. So you want to keep it as close as possible and still get the fat loss results or body comp results that you want. So in general terms, and there is a, there's a guy called Jay Teeter that really says this well, he says, if you eat less, you exercise less. Mm-hmm. If you eat more, you exercise more. Yeah. But you still need to be in a position where you're losing body fat. Yeah. And you basically <clears throat> tweak it until you find that sweet spot. Mm-hmm. Because what's going to happen, remember, training is a stress and dieting is a stress as well. So the more calories you pull away, the more stress hormones are going to go up, the more stressful the, the it is on the body and the more your body's going to want to break down. Make sense? Yeah. hundred percent. So the more stress you're going to put on under your body, the harder it is longer, the, the longer period you, you, you work that out as. So if we look at it from a point of view of you got less food coming in, how much energy you're going to have to perform. And, and typically what, what foods should they take away? Mm-hmm. Let's let's look at that one first. Typically, what what do people do? They'll take away uh, carbs. Yeah. When it's probably the one food that they need to eat to perform well in the gym. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. and I've I've done it in the past. Like I've yeah. done low carb, and it's there's so long you can do it. Some people do well on low carb, but what people don't distinguish is low carb or zero carb. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Now, yeah, yeah. Okay. There's carbohydrates in vegetables. I get that, but they're not gonna 
it's only so long you'll be able to do that without any form of starch coming in or post-workout or pre-workout help. Mm -hmm. And uh, your performance will drop massively. Your yeah. hormones will drop massively, especially if you're on low calories as well. Mm. So it's keeping that sweet spot where you're finding that little bit of fat loss and yet you're able to keep that fat loss coming off without going too aggressive on the deficit or driving your, your output up too high. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. Let's so, go extreme. Do you want to go extreme yet? So tell me, so give me your idea on extreme. Extreme is body comp. It's okay, full on. Cool. You tell me what to do. I'm doing it. Right. You know, I, I come to you and say, I'm going on stage in three months time. Yeah. Let's, let's get ready. So if people need to know. I, I believe that people need to know both ends. And that's my opinion, because if you don't know, people think that they have to do that. When the, if we if we look at those three examples, you're at stage one, but the reason why you're telling me I don't want to look at my nutrition is because you think I'm going to tell you stage three. Yeah. That's that's what the problem is. There's a misunderstanding of, of 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 just accepting where I am right now at my age, my job, my ability, the kids, or whatever it is. So I think there needs to be um, there needs to be an approach of just like a realization. I think Precision Nutrition always did this very well. It talked about. Um, this is a trade-off and this is what you can expect from that. You know, yeah. you can't expect to be on the front of men's health if you're not willing to look at macronutrients and, and eat to a specific calorie yeah. amount. Got you. Okay. Do you see what I mean? So if we go, yeah. if we go to the third, third extreme of that person that wants to be on men's health magazine, what are they doing? Cause if we know where they are, I can say, well, I'll do 20% of that or I'll do 40% of it. Yeah. Exactly. So it's, yeah, it's having that, understanding of what's needed to get to that point in 12 weeks, mm. for example. Yeah. And when you actually, when you actually break that down, people go, oh, yeah, I can't do that. Yeah. Do you, they actually realize mm. what it's going to take. And it's that misconception of what it does take to get mm. there as well. Cause people think, you know, Oh, we're going to the gym. I'm going to eat some vegetables and I'm going to get six pack in 12 mm. weeks. Don't, don't mention, don't forget to mention they're going to have a protein shake. What's that? They're going to have a protein shake as well. Oh yeah. I'll do it. From Asda. <laughs> But it depends, like, if you look at a lot of it, like, especially with, like, myself that used to not do cardio a lot in terms of the weight training, I spent a lot of years with Charles, and sometimes, like, the, in the early stages as well, like, I missed, I missed a bit of the information where I forgot that, like, he's talking about strength athletes who were, like, if you look at the Olympians, Charles was training, it's like, shot put, all that type of stuff, so they're very, sort of, anaerobic, it's very, sort of, power-driven, so... Yeah, technically they don't need a lot of aerobic activity, but when you look at gem pop, a lot of the fitness that you need is driven by aerobics. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at there's somebody that's gonna get fit, I got a guy actually starting right now. We actually started with more aerobic activity first, and his weight training is more aerobic in nature. We're doing some GBC stuff, but it's very um, aerobic in nature. We're working his fitness with that, so there's some lactate going on in there for sure. But we're front ending a lot of his um, a lot of his cardio work is just aerobic. So he's working like zone two stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, so he's working very low. The aim is to actually bring his resting heart rate down. So we're we're reducing his stress to a certain point. So if you're looking at or we're balancing his uh, energy systems out, let's say, so we we want him working at a more efficient, lower resting heart rate. So the more the, the lower I can get his heart rate the higher I can push in then longer as I go into the bit, the bigger phases. Mm -hmm. So let's say for example, at the minute his heart rates near a 70, he's waking up with a 70, uh, 70 beats per minute heart rate. I want that down to like low fifties. Yeah. So if he's starting at 70, when he wakes up, as he gets up and starts moving around the day, it's probably going to shoot up to like 85, maybe. Okay. He starts warming up as he starts training. So you start and warm up. He's already around 110, 120. Well, mm -hmm. holy shit. Be, before he, if he, especially if he starts training with weights, his heart rate's going to shoot up even quicker and then he's going to mm. tap out. So he's going to hit that glycolytic point of the weight training session really quick. Mm. So if I don't get him fitter and bring his resting heart rate down, well, if I do that, well, now I've got more room before he, before he gets to the that point. maximum yeah. and I can train him harder for longer. But I need to front end that and get him fitter mm. to start again ready for that coming up. Yeah. Now, the problem is with aerobics is you need to do it either very frequently or you need to do longer duration of it. Mm -hmm. So with somebody that hasn't got a lot of time, yeah, you can manipulate the variables and make it shorter and still get aerobic adaptations and do some like intervals, but it has to be a specific intensities. 
but how many people have got the time to do four to five times a week, 60 to 90 minutes of cardio alone and do weight training. Exactly. And, and it, their steps, mm -hmm. it ain't, it, it ain't gonna happen. So it's looking at for this person with this sort of schedule, it might mean that 12 weeks, we're going to extend that out and we're going to have a better strategy for you. Mm -hmm. Whereas somebody that's like my guy right now, he's a coach. He coaches other people. She's like, you tell me what to do. I've got time to do it. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, no problem. Let's go. So he's going to be doing at the, the initial stages five times a week. He's doing cardio. That the cardio will drop off as I start to 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 bring him up a bit, so I can save time there. And we give him harder weight training sessions. But if I if you look at the concept of getting better at aerobics, I'm actually enabling them to produce more mitochondria. Mm -hmm. So more mitochondria can burn more energy. So if I'm setting that person up for further energy burning further down the line. What do typically people do when they get further into a diet? They take carbs away. Mm -hmm. So as the weight training gets harder, they're taking carbs away, this can help them perform better. Yeah. So what I'm in my mind, what I do, I look to set up where I still keep them in a slight deficit, but as they go further in, I take the carbohydrates up. Mm -hmm. So now they're actually filling out as they, they get further into the, into the mm -hmm. diet, they're getting better performance. And they're getting better outcomes and better, mm. much better fat loss, eating food much easier. Yeah. And essentially, we end up putting calories up as well. So, going back to your point you're making about the what it takes to get on stage, for example, you look at what I just explained there. A lot of people can't get, won't be able to wrap their heads around that initially if they're not as experienced. It might be that they take more time and look in a sustainable approach first. And the more they learn, and the more they become experienced with the basics, then you can start to layer in all the advanced stuff in terms mm -hmm. of like potentially meal timings and all that stuff as well. Yeah. Like Pre-workout, post-workout, things like that. Mm -hmm. it, can, it can all help. But in the grand scheme of things, for people like the gen pop that we deal with, for example, now, it's like, don't do that until the basics are done. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, 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 love, I love listening to it because obviously I spend – time telling people this kind of thing and so do you and sometimes for me for my own self-development it's nice to hear somebody else say it because you say it differently to maybe the way I say it yeah. and I think that going back to the way people learn sometimes you know you can hear 10 people say the same thing but they'll say it 10 different ways and one of them will resonate with you more than the other nine you know just like your school teachers did when you was at school there'd be one teacher that stands out that you remember because the way they explain things you just got Okay, and I think that's that's just a lesson in life. So it's nice to hear you say that because it, to me, the way you've just explained it, I think, yeah, it's a lot easier than the way I say it because I normally say it when I'm on top of them, pinning them down, shouting at them. <laughs> probably not the best environment when you're screaming at them, don't eat this. So it's it's just good to hear that, the way it's rationalised. I think people listening to this will just go, I like the way Gav says things. I think when we've, with the hundreds and thousands of times we've presented courses and delivered education together i think that that's what's good about the way we do it we bounce off each other and we yeah. explain things differently so hopefully people will go away from this and go yeah guys it makes sense and that's After what we definitely want there's like especially working with a lot of people you find they come in at different levels of competency as well yeah. so i yeah. can't like i don't think i remember all four of them but there's like subconscious uh incompetence mm -hmm. where subconsciously like you're coming in and you, you haven't got a clue what you're doing yeah do you know what i mean and it's like but you go in with it thinking yeah it's gonna be easy mm -hmm. but then the next level is like it's called conscious incompetence so you're actually now aware that you're incompetent mm -hmm. at something <laughs> yeah makes sense yeah so that's when the rubber hits the road you go oh my god this is hard yeah or i've actually got to put effort in now mm -hmm. and that's where the rubber hits the road and you go am i going to follow through and do it or am i going to bail mm -hmm. yeah right so i did a post yesterday on instagram saying when I lack motivation, I do this. And it was all about just improving, like doing something that you know you're not as good at, but getting a little bit better at it. Yeah. Just get uncomfortable in some way every day. That's yeah. what I try and do to myself. Mm -hmm. Just something that I think is going to suck. It doesn't have to be an hour. Like that's one reason why I like people, how do you do cold showers every morning? 
and people go, oh, what's the benefits of it? Like they, th- they think an immune system and all this type mm-hmm. of stuff and cell regeneration, all this. I'm like, no, because it's going to make me mentally resilient. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because like, I, I can prove it to myself every, every morning. If I get that done in the morning and I can do that, the rest of the day is going to be easy. Mm-hmm. And that's all, I, like since the first lockdown, that's all I've done every day. Yeah. I mean, I, I get it. I mean, I've done that Iron Man. And that's nothing to do with my ability to run, cycle and swim. Nope. Because at the start of that journey, I didn't have a bike. I didn't go swimming, <laughs> you know, a doggy paddle at best. And it's, it was about mental resilience. And everything about that was about, I was never going to win the event. Yeah. I came second, but no, I'm joking. Uh, I, I never did that. But everything I did that built me up to it was about well, when I do that Ironman, it's going to be 10 times harder. I mean, I remember literally the day I entered and it's uh, funny because out of all the things, I don't know why I remember this, but uh, I stubbed my toe. I kicked something, stubbed my toe and it absolutely, it's like anything, you know, it, it hurts. The pain goes straight to your brain. I immediately stopped and thought, it doesn't matter. I, and it just clicked. It just doesn't matter. And when I got, when I finished that event and I went, I walked, it took me, I think it was three hours to walk, maybe 200 meters to the hotel i'm not even i'm not even joking that's how slow i was going and taking rests and having to push my bike and it was just more of the coming coming down from what i'd just done and i somehow managed to get into the to the bath um and the water just went red it was just it was just red i was like what on earth is happening I thought, i'm obviously bleeding from somewhere and um then maybe an hour and a half maybe two hours later when i got out of the bath because i just that's how long it took me yeah. The only thing I could do, I'm on my own in a hotel room in Texas, was to just check where this blood's coming from. I still didn't know. I can't feel anything. I'm numb. So I got to this full length mirror, just did what I have to do, just turn my back on it and just bent down, look between my legs. And that, that alone took a while. There was no skin between, well, if you look down, anything you can see there, yeah. and everything you can't see that goes all the way around to your ass, completely yeah. gone. And where my, I had a, a belt on where I had um, carb gels and where if you, if you run, if you think there's that little micro bounce uh, in a, in a, in a belt, when you run, it's hardly anything. Well, you do that for a marathon yeah. or I'd add it on for, you know, four and a half, five hours on a bike and then a marathon. Yeah. There was just flesh hanging out my, out my hips. Yeah. I've still got scars at the back of my hips where it just chafed. Just, I didn't have a clue. I left it rubbing for nine hours and didn't know. Yeah. Didn't even think about it because my head was just so focused on something. A bit deep, but you know, mental resilience has a lot to right. yeah. life. And you look you look like that's like Goggins territory in terms of like endurance type stuff where mm. and if you have you read his book? No. Like I haven't got the resilience like, to read. Hey, <laughs> get, honestly, don't even get the like get the audiobook. Yeah. The audiobook's better. Yeah. The audiobook's insane because he goes into like little um snippets between chapters and he actually explains he's that he's there being interviewed personally like a little mini mm. podcast like this and he's explaining the scenario and the he, some of the stuff earlier on in his life was insane mm. but he explains his first hundred hundred mile race that he did and he did no training for it he just turned up yeah right so yeah. but after the aftermath of that yeah like he was pissing blood yeah like he was in a bad way yeah and his wife at the time was a nurse and he was in the shower afterwards and she's like, I've got to get your hospital. Like, this, mm. this is serious. He's like, no, leave me. He said, I need to feel mm. what this is like. Because, like, his whole thing is like, your, your brain only allows you to do 40% of what you're capable of. Yeah. Just that 40% rule. So if you can start to train that brain to do more, mm. you can start to push the boundaries on what you're actually capable yeah. of. So he was, like, mentally feeling what I was like to, in, in, like, in a way, the, the way I understood it, mm. was the signal to the brain. I'm okay to do this mm. and it just allows you to do that a little bit more a little yeah. bit more a little bit more and that's yeah like you can take punishment like that <laughs> the guy can punish himself but right. it's, it's insane and that's basically what you did you endured yeah. something and you might like i don't know what it's like to do something for that long like you do with the iron man but it's like mentally looking at something going right i've got 26 miles left let's just get through this next mile it's one step at a time, Gav. This next mile. It's one step at a time. You don't even you don't even think about miles or speed. It's I've just got to get one foot in front of the other, yeah. and that's all your focus is. 
because if you ask me now what do I think about when I was doing it I can't tell you I, I have no I'm looking at the picture now on the wall next to me here 11 hours and 40 40 40 minutes I'm thinking what did I do for that time because yeah. when I remember when it said three two one go and then I just it was at the end it was like waking up from a dream I was never once thought about it I mean with an Ironman especially with the bike you have there's a rule you can't be within three bikes lengths in front of or behind somebody you have to give space you have to do it on your own and not many people realize that you can't cycle with with 10 people around you and have a nice chat for the whole thing you're on your own and if there are people on motorbikes going up and down and if you're within three bike lengths of somebody they show you a yellow card you have a time panel you have to stop they get, yeah. you get two of them you're disqualified you have to do this it's this is why it's such a, a mentally tough challenge um but once you get to that you just i mean the things that go through your head i mean i was younger and probably more naive i mean that night when i went to bed same thing pissing blood all of that i, mean, I should have been in the hospital but I, I was i was supposed to be in hospital i found out the next day more people were in the hospital that didn't do the race that did the race because it was so hot and it was 49 degrees yeah next time it's 23 degrees and people tell me in england it's hot 49 that's how hot it was it thundered yeah. the night before there was no cloud in the sky you were in complete sunshine in texas there was the heat coming off the roads. You know, they had to put shelter over your bikes because your tires might pop in the heat. It was stupid. Um, I was supposed to be on a drip by, you know, I'd have been on a drip for a bloody week after that. But anyway, it's that so, mental so, resilience. So, exactly. So that mental resilience is to improve yourself. Mm. That lit like 1% a day or 1% a week on each workout. So yeah. that was the whole point of the post yesterday. It was like, just do something and improve something you think you're not good at. And yeah. all of a sudden you start to realize what you can do. Mm -hmm. So that increases motivation. Mm -hmm. But another thing to increase motivation is get clarity on what you need to do. Yeah. So when I go into the gym, I'm going to, all I need to do is put two kilos on the bar extra. Yeah. Okay. That's clarity. That's all. You, now that increases motivation because you know mm -hmm. exactly what you got to do. If you do it, your motivation goes up. Yeah. Right. So that was the, the post yesterday. Sorry, man. I'm just going to move my computer. Yes. The, the sunlight coming through this window is Mendel. Now that's when, you get to that stage of conscious incompetence. Like you actually realize, holy shit, this is going to be hard. Get clarity on exactly what you've got to do every day. And that's typically what people come to me for. Mm. They're at that stage where they, they want to do, or it's literally one of the, it's number one or number two. Then once they've started to go to coaching, it's like, then they mm. get to the point of their conscious competence. So they start to get, they've got to think about it, but they're getting good at it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, I'm getting good at meal prepping. I'm, I'm organizing my week. That's the first step. I'm getting good at scheduling stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm getting good at making my meals in the evening and having stuff left for the next day. Okay, that's one step. Mm -hmm. right? I'm getting good at the back squat or I'm getting good at split squats, whatever it is. But they're getting good at it and they, they're, they're aware of it. And then the, yeah. the last stage is subconscious competence. So now... They come in and they're just prepping stuff automatically on, yeah. on autopilot. Everything becomes autopilot. And all they mm -hmm. need now is programs. That's it. Yeah. Just follow the periodization. I think that's the difficulty as well with, it's, a, it's, a, not, it's the unknown. A lot of um, magazines and social media and a lot of coaches that probably don't, not maybe at a level of acceptance like we are and maturity of doing it and maybe experience is the proper word for it. But when I write a program, it could be periodized over days and weeks. That's fine. But when it comes to nutrition, you just can't do it. And But you you buy a magazine, it will say, here's a 12-week diet. Yeah. And I think you can't do that. There's too many There's too many bumps in the road. There's too many lifestyle factors that change. There's, there's too many days where you get up and you, your energy is low and you just can't do it because you've not, you've not quite got the right balance. Yeah. And if it's not personalized and if it's not got someone like, like yourself, that's going to say, right, this week, this is what we've worked on. You know, I, I bang my head against the wall because I spend a lot of time with personal trainers telling them, stop writing things for people that last for 12 weeks. Yeah. Okay, I'm happy for you to plan 12 weeks on your side of the fence. But if I go and tell client A, here's 12 weeks of exercise and here's a 12 week nutrition plan, it's too long. All your focus is, is today's Monday. Well, let's focus on getting to next Monday. We'll have a catch up call or an appointment together let's go through it and let's see how the last seven days have gone. And that's the longest term strategy we need. You every, know, every week they fail every Friday, Saturday, I send out checking forms yeah. to the clients and it's like, okay, there's a lot of, there's, there's about eight to 10 questions depending on who they are. Mm. 
Yeah. Eight to 10 questions. They get, they fill the uh, questions out to me. Mm -hmm. I analyze them on a Sunday, Monday morning, and then I give them video feedback on exactly what they need to do for the next week. Yeah. It's a week by week basis. Every Wednesday, we do a catch up call. Everybody comes on the Zoom call, or as many people that can make it. We've got people in different countries. And we go over any roadblocks that they have. And when we deep dive into the questions that they have, come up with the solutions, or, and we also went like topics on how to maximize the performance in the gym, how to meal prep, that type, that type of thing, or nutrition uh, in depth a little bit more. So that's the level of supports like people need. It's like, mm. like if you just follow it, like people say, oh, can send me a meal plan. No, I'll mm. send you an example of what it looks like. I'm not going to tell yeah. you what to eat because yeah. if I send you recipes of some of the shit I eat, you won't like it. <laughs> <Do you know? laughs> yeah. Like, octopus you know, I, probably. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Octopus for breakfast. Yeah. Snails, go on. I'll, I'll eat snails all morning. I love them. Yeah. Right? But you ain't going to eat them. Yeah. So it's pointless me sending you a meal plan. Let's, let's teach you and let's coach you on how mm. to do it effectively for you. Yeah. Like get feedback every week. Show me what you're doing. Let me see where you're making um, the decisions you are throughout the day. And let me show you how to improve it or tell you, like, that's perfect. Don't worry mm. about it. Just keep doing that. And let's focus on the one thing that's going to get you to the next step. Yeah. I think there's a lot to be said for that. doesn't matter what stage of uh, adaptation you're at or acceptance or whatever you want to call it. I think that when, when people start to learn about food, what is 100 grams? What is 23 grams? What does it look like? Because a lot, a lot of times people say to me, I don't want to weigh my food. I'm, so I'm not trying to make you weigh your food for any other reason apart from you need to understand what the quantities are. Because if you don't know what the quantity looks like, you're not going to know how much we could be eating or should be eating and you don't know where oh, you're overeating. Do you know what, mate? Like people come into, into the coach with me and they're like, they should be knowing this. I'm saying like some coaches don't even know it. Yeah. Like mm. I sort of, um, I wrote a course with Casper uh, for Polycon Group and it was just like the, the pre, like, because we, uh, there was obviously Biosig, which Charles did and all that stuff. And there was, Charles made it very sort of simple, like eat, if it doesn't run, fly or swim, and it's not, <laughs> you don't eat it type of thing. Um, you've got to earn your carbohydrates. If you are over X amount of percent body fat, you can have 12 licks of a dry prune every 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it, was, it was funny at the time, but yeah. Like, but you take, you can't do that with people. No. Like, and especially not, with yeah. the coaches that are coming through, the reason we did, we, we integrated all the calories and all that type of stuff to it. Like this is the, the advanced biosig transformations on how to work with gem pop. It's like, we were having, co we were having coaches ask, coaches now ask the questions. There was one coach that thought um, 50 grams of carbohydrates was 50 grams of blueberries. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Like, now that's not a, I'm not, taking the mickey yeah. out of somebody no that's something they didn't know so that shows me that we need to put something in the place so they start to understand that mm -hmm. so we have to put an education system in place so they, yeah. they know exactly what they're doing now if that's a coach thinking that mm. what's the client what's, doing what's the client doing mm. so that's why like and i'm doing i've actually scheduled a post on this uh this coming week or so it's like i haven't got time to i haven't got time to weigh my food mm -hmm. okay so this was an actual conversation with a client now yeah okay tell me what you do in the evening I come in, I make my food. Okay. Walk me through a step by step. So I'm cooking my food. Um, and when it's done, I put my meat on the plate, I put my vegetables on the plate, and I put my potatoes on the plate. Let's I can't exactly remember the, the actual meal that he was talking about, but let's use that because it's it doesn't matter. No problem. Okay. Does it matter if your plate is on the scale or on the side? Does that matter? No, not really. It won't take I me mean, much more time. Okay, perfect. Product fucking scale. Yeah. <laughs> because now you you know exactly how much is coming in. Yeah. And here's the kicker. How much olive oil do you think you was using? Yeah. Right? Way I, too I, much. Honest, I swear yeah. to God, I've had clients that actually start to put things like that in and they save seven to eight hundred calories a day. It's drizzling on everything. Everything. Or even mm. like the amount that they cook with. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I'm not eating it. You're eating it. Like you're cooking in it. <laughs> Do you know mm. what I mean? And it, like one of them was my sister-in-law. Yeah. She went through a program. Like she paid, like she was doing these boot camp things and she was training five, six days a week, eating healthy, mm -hmm. right? Good food. She didn't lose a pound in a year. Mm -hmm. Body shape didn't change. So I said, look, just come on to my program. She went on the app. There's your workouts. I said, bro, all I want you to do is track this. This isn't forever. This is just to give you an idea of portion size, portion control, mm. what's coming in, what's going out, that type of thing. Literally in 
12 weeks, she lost only 10 kilos. Yeah. And I haven't changed anything out of her daily routine. She mm -hmm. does exactly the same. She still preps the same. She does everything the same, but she's got control on the amount of food coming in. She knows exactly where it's coming from. Yeah. The first message was, I didn't realize how many calories were in olive oil. Yeah. Right. Now, mm -hmm. here's the kicker. There's studies now. I think we mentioned this on a, on a podcast earlier, uh, a, a few weeks back. People have no clue on what calories are in what foods, mm -hmm. especially, and that is the, the worst thing, in processed foods. Because mm -hmm. when you boil those down, let's say, for example, I gave somebody a donut, what macronutrient do you think they would think that was? Carbohydrates. Carbs. There's more fat in that. Mm -hmm. and more. Actually, there's fat in that, but there's more calories from fat in that. Yeah. So they can't distinguish the amount of calories in it. Yeah. But they're willing to pay double more than that. And that's mm -hmm. based on studies as well. The studies done on that. They're, they're willing to pay more for that food yeah. because it, help, it, it drives their dopamine levels up even more. Yeah. It's just like satisfying. And this is the problem. Yeah. It's the miseducation of it. I always say it's, this is why, I mean, I, these government guidelines, I, I, I kind of, I like in, in one way, but I hate them in the other because they give you this such broad overview that allows too many, too many mistakes to happen. So, I just question whether or not it's helping or hindering the, the process because people aren't getting better educated. They're, they're not learning about it. They're just being, they're just given numbers and they, they, but they don't know what those numbers mean. Yeah. You know, why was five ever even considered for a, for a number to have five, a, five a day? How, why was that? Where did that come from? I'm sure it was somewhere. I'm not going to say it wasn't. I'm sure the government don't make these things up, but if you don't know off the top of your head, why is everyone following it? So we've just got to understand there's education that comes with it. That if we can if we can educate people better, then it won't these problems won't exist. But we just keep telling them different ways without the full explanation. I think that's yeah. everyone's trying to do their best with it, but it's like yeah, when you when you boil it down, like if you get control of there's all like we talked about inflammation before. Mm. Like the the higher the body fat percentage people have, the more inflammation they're gonna have. The yeah. more inflammation they're gonna have, the the more skewed their hunger hormones, all that type of stuff goes out the window leptin levels drop and like it's all that type of stuff gets all caught up in everything and they it's like there's no way out okay so let's start with the basics mm. track how much food you're eating yeah let's put it let's keep it like if i told you not to eat something what's the what's the one thing you're gonna always think of the thing you, you told me not to eat exactly so yeah. that's that's one place which i don't like to go with like, don't eat this well so that's the first, first thing you're gonna think of all well, everything yeah you start craving it so some actually some clients have said eat it every day mm. and as soon as they do they do that i'm like what i got i can eat that every day yeah don't worry about it yep and then all of a sudden they stop binging on it or they stop mm. looking for it because like it's that golden thing right they mm. always so there's a there's a few ways around it but if when we really boil it down let's start getting a handle on calories first let's see what you need let's see how much activity you're going to do yeah. Just get get the basics done. Yeah. And then you can get advanced as you go along when your mm. competency improves in, in yeah. all the areas. Then. Definitely. All right, Gaff. Well, look, I think we've got this, we've got the conversation definitely to a level that allows us to grow and grow these topics into different areas and different sports and different body types and male and female differences as well. So I think this is going to be a good starting block for nutrition and people to sort of understand a few things. So great talk today i think it was good i think you've done it again you've calmed me down you've put things into a context that people can actually understand rather than me giving it the john barnes rap on everything um, <laughs> <laughs> she's talking so quick rap, unbelievable yeah, yeah i've mastered it now i think the thing that i was missing in the past i didn't have a football under my arm when i was doing it <laughs> <laughs> right next podcast start off with a rap then the john barnes one my mum would love it. My mum oh, loves John yes. Barnes. Yeah. Right, well, that's, we've definitely got one listener from doing the John Barnes rap. <laughs> right, I'll brush it off. Thanks, Gav. Thanks for everything. Nice, mate. Follow us on your it, socials yeah. and make yeah. sure if you've got any feedback or questions, send it to us, both on Instagram. You'll find us. We'll be there. Speak to you soon. Cheers. <laughs>